Hello, welcome to Liz Rocks and Stuff. I'm Liz and today I am gonna be encasing some beetles in resin. So before I get started with that, I wanted to kind of go over my setup. So when I switch to the top down, you can actually see what's going on. So first of all, I have my resin. This is a part, part A, part B, uh, one to one ratio epoxy. This is a brand that I actually really love. I've just started using it, but it has been better than any other brand that I have tried. Um, I also, this is a, I use a silicone mat. This is to keep anything off of my uh, worktop here. This is a very nice wooden worktop, so I don't want to get resin on it. I also have in the back, I have my um, stirring sticks, measuring cups. I always have my gloves nearby, and then I have some mold release. Always handy to have mold release when you're using molds. Today, I'm going to be using this mold. Um, I also have nearby my respirator. I have some additional smaller mixing cups if I need them. And then I also always have paper towels. And then one last thing, I keep a spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol. This is 90%. Um, it says 70% on the label, but it's 90% that I put in here. I use that for cleaning up any spills that I have. I use it for uh, if I get epoxy on my hands by accident, I can clean that up. But I also use it to pop the bubbles in the resin. And then also just off, um, I also have my vacuum chamber that I'll be using as well. So today we have two beetles. Um, this is, a, I believe this is a female staghorn beetle. And we also have a male, um, which you can't really see in here. We did find these already dead outside of our house. We did not kill these beetles for this project, um, but we found them, thought it'd be cool to put them in resin. So that's what we're gonna do today. I have a very basic idea of how this is gonna work, but I don't really know for sure. So I will be starting with one and then we're gonna move on from there. Okay, so I flipped my mat over because the other side was a little too shiny. I didn't like how it was showing up on the light. So if it looks a little different, that's why. So to start out, we need to mix up our resin. And I'm gonna go over a few things before I do that because once I open this resin, I'm gonna put on a respirator and then it's all gonna be voiceover or just, you know, sounds of me doing resin stuff. So uh, first of all, this is the mold we're gonna use. I earlier put in some, I uh, put water in it so that I could see how much it would hold. This holds about two and a half ounces of water. I'm going to err on the side of it, probably holds closer to uh, two ounces once you account for the size of the beetle we're putting in it. Um, so I'm gonna first mix up an ounce of resin to put in here. Now I might, I think I'm gonna mix up a little bit more because I actually want to I have another project I'm working on, so I'll mix up a little extra resin. But um, put water in the mold and figured out that this holds two and a half ounces total. And I'm gonna first start out by filling it up only halfway. So uh, that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna mix up some resin and do that. I also am gonna bring out my vacuum chamber. So the way, if you're not familiar with how a vacuum chamber works, you have a vacuum pump and that uh, pump is off to the side here, but you will have a lid on the lid. You have this valve. So you have, um, this is where the air is gonna be pumped out by the pump. This is where the air gets let back in once you're done. And this is the gauge to tell you how much pressure you have going in it. And then we have this tube. So you put whatever you're uh, vacuuming in the bottom here. You put your lid on, you're gonna take your hose, attach one of it to your, I guess technically it's your output. And then the other end is going to get attached to the input of your pump. In my case, it's right here. So this is my pump. And then you always start with both of your valves closed. You uh, put what you want in there, you put your lid on, you turn your pump on, and then you open the valve. And that is going to pull 
the air out of the chamber and thus the air out of your resin. Once you get it to the pressure that you want, um, you will close your valve and then turn off your pump. If you turn off your pump before you turn off your valve or close your valve, you're going to suck air into your pump. And that's not what you want to do. It's actually going to cause all kinds of problems. So then you can leave it here. I usually do about five minutes. And then you would open this valve to let the air back into your chamber. That's, so that's how they work. It took me a couple tries to get the hang of that when I first started. So I thought I might go over that. All right, also measuring out your resin. If I'm doing large amounts of resin, I will just use these cups that have the measuring systems already on it. So if I know I'm doing two ounces, it's a one to one, I'll put an ounce of the one and then an ounce of the other and I'll get two ounces out of that. If I'm doing smaller batches, I will actually use some syringes and I keep them labeled. So this is A and B. So I know which one is which. Uh, and I can just uh, measure up, you know, maybe five milliliters or however much I want to do if I'm just doing very small amounts of resin. All right, so moving into this, first things first, gloves. And once I put the respirator on, I'm actually going to uh, go into a voiceover if I need to add anything. So then here's my respirator. And you need to make sure you have a respirator that's not just for debris, that it actually is also for toxic um, fumes. Um, I found that out the hard way that I wasn't using a respirator for a while and I started having horrible migraines. Um, so now I always use a respirator. I also open the windows in the room that I'm working in and this room happens to have an exhaust fan as well. So I turn all that on, get all that set up and then I do my resin. All right, switching over into voiceover so you don't have to listen to me sound like Darth Vader breathing into a respirator. Um, all right, so mixing up the resin here. Most of the rest of this video is going to be sped up because I don't think you want to see me pouring and mixing resin 18,000 times. So um, this is, like I said before, two-part epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so I'm just pouring equal parts of the A and the B. And then you need to mix this for two minutes. And when you mix like this, it's going to get bubbles in it. That's just how it works. And um, so I'm going to mix it for the two minutes and then I'm going to put it in the uh, vacuum chamber to get as much of those bubbles out as I can. Now, I use the silicone mixer when I'm mixing by hand because I can just wipe it off. And if anything's left on there, it cures and it can come right off. But anyway, um, putting this into the vacuum chamber, I um, use alcohol like I've said before I like to use alcohol to pop bubbles and what I have found in my own personal experience have not done experiments with this have not done any kind of research into this this is my own personal experience I found that when you spray the alcohol on the top of the resin and put it in the vacuum chamber that it keeps the bubbles from rising up as much so if you don't know when you put something in the vacuum chamber you need to make sure you have plenty of space on top for those bubbles to rise up and to pop and what I found is if I spray alcohol on it first, that the alcohol is going to sit on top of that resin for at least a little bit. And it's going to pop those first bubbles, the initial ones, first a lot quicker. So it doesn't rise up quite as much. That's just my own personal experience. That's how I kind of feel that it works. You do want to make sure that you use alcohol rather sparingly. Um... And also, I use mold release on this one. I forgot to do it on the second attempt, but you'll see it doesn't really matter with these particular molds. Some molds you really do want to make sure you're using mold release, but on this one it didn't seem to matter that much. So I'm going to fill this mold about a quarter of an inch. And then I am going to try to follow the instructions, which is to pour about a quarter of an inch into the mold, let it sit for about 45 minutes to where it gets mostly cured. So this epoxy um, takes about an hour to get kind of set-ish. 
supposedly it's got a working time about 45 minutes is what I'm trying to say. So you can see all those bu bubbles around the, the mold itself. I was very stupid about those and thought that they would come out and they did not. But anyway, what you're supposed to do is let this first layer go almost for the entire working time of your resin so that it's very, very sticky. It's supposed to kind of then hold onto this beetle. So it's going to be like, um, you go for almost the entire working period, which for this was 45 minutes. And I'm making sure that that beetle's not sticking above the top of the mold. That's why I kind of ran that across. I wanted to make sure I wasn't hitting the beetle, that it was definitely sitting down in the mold all the way. Um, and then you want to put the beetle in there and let it sit for a few more minutes to kind of almost finish with curing through the working time. So the working time is how long the resin is still going to be in a liquid form where you can still pour it into a mold or pour it onto your surface or whatever and use it. Um, and then the rest of that, so then it's uh, about 24 hours until it's solid enough that you can demold it. And, but then it's another further two days after that. So it's a 72 hour complete cure time. So you want to pay attention to those. I looked that up for this particular resin. Every resin is different. So don't go by what I'm saying. That's for this particular resin. And even this didn't work the way it was supposed to. So I let it sit for that initial 30 to 45 minutes, put the beetle in there. And then I poured another layer on top of that. Now I didn't fill this mold completely. I was just pouring another thinner layer to try and, and hold this beetle down and it's not working. My main struggle, you're going to see me struggle with this through this whole video is in just getting these beetles to stay down in the mold to stop floating. So, um, I'm trying to get those bubbles that I can see in there. Um, out now they are pretty well stuck to the silicone and I don't know and they don't come out with this vacuum chamber in the attempt to you'll see how I deal with them but they actually never come out in uh, this first attempt that I have so I put this in the vacuum chamber to try and pull some more of those bubbles out and it did actually pull some out, you can see. But you want to be very careful when you're doing it in a shallow mold like this because, like I said, that the bubbles can come up and they can overflow. So when you're using a vacuum chamber, your, your resin will overflow um, if you have too much resin in the container that you're putting in there. So I'm here popping bubbles. I use quite a bit of alcohol on this to try and pop all the bubbles. It didn't end up affecting my cure at all. Um, at the end, I can show you what these looked like months later. Um, but they, they did fully cure. They did what they were supposed to, but, um, you want to be very careful when you're using alcohol to pop bubbles because when you mix alcohol into the resin, it does affect the cure time and it can cause it to either not fully cure or, cure very slowly, much more slowly. So that might have been part of my problem here is that I was using alcohol to pop the bubbles. So that caused the resin to cure more slowly than it really should have. But this is me propping things up, putting weight on that beetle to try and get it to stay down under that resin. Because the whole point of this is that it needs to be down in the resin. You can see it's still trying to float. It's a lot slower. I keep putting how, how long I'm waiting. So it's like, I would keep going back every few minutes to try and see, is it staying down in the resin? Because I wanted it to be down in the resin enough that it was going to stay, but I needed to pull these, uh, tweezers out with enough time for the resin to then fill the hole where the tweezers were, if that makes sense. So I didn't want like a hole because that's where the tweezers were on the top of my, my beetle. So I'm trying to balance that. I'm checking it every couple of minutes. So this is much thicker. You can see it's very stringy when it comes out. It's mostly cured, but for some reason it's not holding this beetle in place. And I don't know, there's a process that you can use where you basically disassemble and gut the insect and there's like nothing in there. I didn't do that because I, I, I didn't even want to touch these beetles. <laughs> so, um, I was not about to, uh, 
do all that. But if you are inclined, there are ways that you can like disassemble, scoop out the insides, and then that might help because then you, the insides will get filled with the resin as well and it might stay down better because um, there's probably air in the bottle body of this beetle. Who knows? Um, but I struggled with that a lot. And essentially, I basically ended up using these tweezers with some weight on them to kind of hold that beetle down until it would stay. And then I can pull those, those tweezers out. I think at this point it was finally staying down. Um, something else you could do is I could have just gone with that very first, very thin layer, put the beetle on it, let that cure completely, and then pour the top layers on it, on top of it. And that would have worked, but then you would have had layer lines. So when you looked at it from the side, you would have seen where those layers are. Uh, and I was trying to do this without the layer lines. And so that's why you pour it when you have uh, less, when you don't let it cure completely before pouring the next layer. So uh, you can see those bubbles. Those are just on the surface. There do not seem to be many or if any bubbles in the resin itself, it's all on the surface where the mold was. So um, that was ultimately, I, it got done. There's bubbles, but I do have a beetle in resin um, and I think I can fix the bubbles. I might do a follow-up video at some point of how I'm gonna address those because I, I don't want to sand them down and then polish because that's going to remove the resin and with how close that beetle is to the surface I don't want to risk exposing it. Another option would be for me to use UV resin to fill in the bubbles and cure it that way um, and then possibly sand that down so that it's flat because you're not going to get a flat surface with that but I, ha I, I have some ideas on how I'm going to do this by the way my resin somehow cemented itself shut. Now th these were done right after the other so this was literally the next day so I don't know how that got mixed up. They have two different types of lids. Like one is just a screw cap and one is one that you have to press down and turn. So you can't mix them up. So there's no way that I accidentally got the B part on the A part and then it cured shut. You can't do that with this. Um, so I don't know what happened there, but that was a, a struggle. It took me quite a while. I cut out actually most of that struggle of getting that open. Um, but anyway, so starting beetle number two, this will be the male beetle. Um, I'm starting the same way. So mixing just a little bit of resin up to get a very thin layer on the bottom, going to let that cure most of the way. And, um, I'm going to try to use what I learned from doing the first one and apply that to doing the second one and hopefully don't run into the same issues. Spoiler alert, I run into the same issues. Um, and I don't know what the fix for it is, to be honest. Um, so there's me spraying the alcohol on the top of that. And maybe the answer is I don't spray alcohol when I'm doing a, a multi-layer pour like this. I just let it, uh, I pop it with heat instead, which I don't like doing, but I can. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. So this is me doing a vacuum on the very first layer. This one is then going to be the one that sits for the longest amount of time. Um, uh, by the way, the pressure I put it up to is like 27 mer mercurials or whatever the pressure, uh, unit is. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but 27, um, I think there's a, there's different ways of measuring pressure. My gauge uses the HG, uh, indicator and I, I take that up to about 27. Essentially you you let it go up until the gauge stops moving. You don't want to overpressurize it. And uh, once it stops moving, you can turn the pump off and then you just let it sit for however long you want. So it takes about a minute or two to get up to that pressure, at least this particular pot does. Um, and then you just let it sit for the rest of the time. So to combat those bubbles I saw on the other one, this is what I'm doing. I'm taking this little plastic spoon stirring thing and I'm just scraping them off of the mold, literally just popping them, scraping them up. And I don't know why that is so off screen, but it is. Um, but that's what I did is I, I literally scraped them off the side and that actually did work. So then I'm going to use my alcohol to pop those bubbles when they rose to the surface. 
And then uh, I believe I'm just going to let this sit for that working time, that 45 minutes. Um, I am trying to be sparing with the alcohol because I don't want it to affect the cure time, but you know, maybe I, I shouldn't have used it at all. Um, who knows? Uh, I could have used too much, maybe shouldn't have used it at all, but you know, take that information, do with it as you will. Maybe using heat would have been better, but, um, yeah, so this is attempt to with the male stag beetle eventually. Um, so yeah, let that sit for 45 minutes. That's because that's what the working time is. And I'm going to try and show you how, how much it's thickened. So you can see it's not st super stringy yet, but it isn't, it is definitely hardening up. So I go ahead and like I said, I did not want to touch these things. I don't know why. I'm not scared of bugs. I just don't like to touch them. Like, they're cool. They're fine. They can do their thing. But I just don't want to touch them. So this is me trying very hard to flip it over. Um, and then try and get it into this mold. And there is a, a, another reason I'm very squeamish about this particular beetle. I'm not going to get into it. But let's just say that I had a very good reason to really not want to touch this thing. Um... It had been sitting in my office for months and it smelled of death. It was awful. Anyway, that's why it was closed in another container. <laughs> a fully, fully enclosed container and why I'm very glad that I was wearing a respirator for this part. So, um, yeah. Now we are going to do the same thing. It has sat for 45 minutes. I let it sit for a few more minutes. And now we are going to, to try and get that to solidify a little bit more onto the beetle. So now instead of pouring this into the mold and then using the vacuum chamber on it. I'm going to use the vacuum chamber first. It is going to introduce some bubbles when you pour it, but um, it's still worthwhile to do it first. You don't want to do it when it's in the mold like I did the first time. Um, but, you know, sometimes you do things you're not really supposed to. And we're going to... Uh, that's actually pretty bubble free. It, this vacuum chamber works pretty well. I just don't always use it properly. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and pour this on top again, using my alcohol to pop the bubbles that I can see in there and uh, then pour this on top and start the marathon of would you just please stop floating? Oh my goodness. Why that happens <laughs> with this beetle too. I don't know what it is about this method that I used, but I could not get them to stop floating. And it could be, like I said, it could be that I didn't clean out the insides of these beetles. So there's a big void of air in there, um, and no way for the resin to get in there and fill that void and therefore help keep it down. Maybe I should have poked a little hole in it or something. I don't know. But anyway, so I let it sit for a few more minutes. I, I did the same thing with this one that I did with the first beetle in that I just kept letting it sit. I kept letting it sit until I thought it wasn't going to float anymore. Um, I never did get to the point where it stopped floating on me. But I did the same thing that I did with the first beetle in that I um, just kind of held it down until it did stop floating and then pulled the tweezers out so that it um, didn't leave a hole but because this beetle is longer in a slightly different shape from the first one it was a little more difficult to hold it down and I don't remember if I get a good shot of how I managed to do it but uh, it was some MacGyvering you know I had to, to channel my inner MacGyver for this so this is me filling the mold all the way up and look at that. It floats. So I'm at this point, just like, I just want to get this done. So I put that on there and it kept floating up to the side. It kept, um, not doing what I want it to do. So this is me scraping all of the bubbles off. I'm trying to find the perfect place to put these tweezers so that it's in the center of gravity um, cause it kept floating high on one side and low on the other. Like 
you can see when I put it on, over the, the head part, the body, the, the back part floats up. If I put it in the middle, the whole thing floats up. I was having trouble getting it. So I used these tweezers that are open tweezers. I held them shut with a zip tie, used those uh, silicone stirring sticks to keep it upright because it was not as stable as the white pair and just sort of used those to kind of hold this thing down. Um, and then I left it there for quite a few minutes and, uh, I didn't, okay. So I didn't film me taking it out, but I did, le I did take it out, um, once it stopped floating and it did take quite a while. I want to say probably an hour or so for that to stop. So this is me taking it out and you can see it's very far down in the mold. I probably could have done a better job of sort of centering it height up and down wise vertically, I guess. Um, and there are some bubbles in there you can see, but it is vastly better than the first one. So, um, some bubbles that I might actually be able to maybe sand out as opposed to the first one where there's bubbles all over the surfaces. But yeah, so ultimately I don't, I wouldn't call this a hundred percent successful. I did get two beetles encased in resin completely. Um, not my best work, but I hope that maybe I, I learned some things from this. Maybe other people can learn from this and, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> take my lessons and learn from them yourself. After I show, um, these a little more closely, I can also show you what they look like, um, several months later. So you can see that ultimately it was successful in preserving them, um, but yeah, so I will be back in a couple of minutes with the months later. Here's how they're still doing. And now you can see three months later how these are pretty much exactly the same. They uh, didn't decay any, it doesn't seem. You can still see all the bubbles in the the female beetle here I haven't had a chance to try and fix those yet but I will eventually and maybe make a video out of that so this is the male beetle again pretty much looks the same and uh, I can't see that there's any significant difference there might be a little bit where it's pulling away from the mold a little bit in there but you know uh, as a first attempt at doing something like this, I think it turned out pretty decently. So, thanks for watching. I hope I was able to, uh, if not entirely succeed, at least help keep other people from making some of the same mistakes that I did. And I hope you enjoyed the video.